As we roll into 2016, let's reflect on the top regional news stories of last year. I have two very popular guests with me next on Lakeshore Focus. Programming is supported by NIPSCO. Today's young minds are constantly reimagining what our world will be like tomorrow. That's why NIPSCO is upgrading its infrastructure now, so we're ready for whatever comes next. More information at nipsco.com slash future. Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. I think it can be clearly stated that 2016 was a very interesting year. It has come to a close, but the history of what happened in our region and the stories that stayed with us impact us even now. What was in the news last year that had an impact on us? What touched our hearts, aroused our fears, and made us think? Here with us in our studio are two of my favorite people who happen to be journalists from our two major newspapers in this region, Krista Zivanovic with The Times and Jerry Davidge with The Post Tribune. Do you guys realize this is our fifth year doing this? I would have guessed third or fourth. Third or fourth? Yeah. Well, in honor of being our fifth, I brought a fifth for each of you that will maybe do shots afterwards. I think it's Mad Dog for you. Oh, and good. That's what I used to drink. Fine French champagne. I'm game. For you. I'm in. You know, I just thought it fit the personalities. Perfect. Thank Before you. the show, not Better. after, right? Well, true. After the show. <laughs> I want to make sure show. we can get through the show. All right. So here we are, the beginning of 2017, and so give you plenty of time to reflect on our 2016 stories. So how are we going to proceed this year? Well, I think in, in light of we've been doing this for five years, I think this is, has been the newsiest of the five years. I have to agree. For journalism, for to. local newspapers, of course, national issues and local issues have been colliding this whole year. And maybe I'm wrong, but I think this has been the craziest, busiest news-packed year. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, in the I last five, if not maybe more, maybe ten years, possibly. And so we've you, had the addition of even fake news, so it's yeah, just, throw that in, right? So we much news. news. So we we're going to talk to about fake news here at some point. I think it'd be good the most interesting fake news story, but we'll come back to that one. So how'd you? I, always interesting. Jerry has a few scribbled notes, and you have this she extensive dossier of articles <laughs> and everything. It's just very impressive. Go with your you dossier, think? Kristen. Yes. What do you lead yes. with? So what are you leading with this well, year? Well, you know, I, I really can't lead with anything because there's so many things. So I'm just going to go in order of most recent to last. Um, I have to say the East Chicago lead story was just amazing. Um, the, the EPA finally did... Um, uh, they, they had a cleanup plan as of 2009, even though they had known there were issues since 1989. And, uh, but things were rolling along. People didn't realize there was a problem until recently the mayor sent a letter to residents in the West Calumet neighborhood and told them uh, they were going to need to move because they were going to have to build something new on here and mediate the land. They found that uh, in some areas, it was 227 times the safe limit. Didn't the story go and for like almost six months? Has oh, well, it, it started in or? August. Okay, so it, it's, yeah. it's about, about half a year. But you know, one of the things I thought was interesting about this story was, do you think it got the same traction that the Flint, Michigan story got? It well, it's starting it's getting to, there. don't you yeah. think, Jerry? It's getting yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It didn't, and, it didn't initially, you're right. And in fact, the kids that are affected, I mean, we can bring out all the statistics, we won't do that here, but um, they are higher than the levels for the most yeah. part of the kids in Flint. And what um, we just most recently, we were working for months on the story, and, and two of our reporters looked through thousands of documents and also brought to light the corruption f going back four decades, Why wasn't decades. our story as important as Flint, Michigan? Because I, th I think it was in December I saw, hey, this is finally rising to the level of Flint, Michigan. I'm like, I don't really? know. Harris just came out yeah. then, you're saying. Finally. I don't know. Is it know. because Do we're you know? Northwest Indiana and we're not Flint, Michigan? It's because I don't know. It's Michael Moore of, does not live here? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So just, it's just kind of interesting. Not that we maybe want that no. because it's to, it just means we're in as bad a shape as they are. Yeah. So. But we are, or that area is as yeah. bad a shape, unfortunately. Yeah, it really yeah. is. And it's all coming to light. I've heard about that even weeks before it came out. I, yes. heard, I heard rumors and tips, and I didn't yes. follow through because I just thought, no, it can't be well, that bad, could, right? And you'd still, if nobody would talk for the record, you right. couldn't, you know. But I heard, yeah. I heard rumors about it all through the summer. You're right. Yeah. And this affects a lot of people's lives. How about a story for you? Um, politics, politics. And I'm not very political-minded, but I wrote more columns on politics this past year than I've ever written in any given year. And why? Because it's Trump, 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 Trump. It's Hillary and Trump. 
it was Republicans, it was Democrats, then it came Hillary and Donald, and then it's Trump, and it's all Trump for the last two months or so. And people are talking about it. So I like to write about what people are talking, and when they're talking about Trump and they want another column, well, darn it, I'm going to write it, even if it's uh, the fourth or fifth or seventh that I've written in the past two months. I'm surprised you didn't lead off with that one. Well, well this is local, though. Yeah, well, I mean, that's this true. is, this is local well, news. And I, I did have some, news. well, I had the national, I mean, and then there's the Pence piece of Trump. So we, right, that, it really intersects yeah, there's a lot. That's, that's why we're saying, Keith, that's why this, yes. this year was so busy. And that we're cray, just the tip cray. of the iceberg. Yeah. But a lot of it's just politics. People care about politics again, whether you agree with Trump or didn't agree or voted for him, didn't vote for him. People are talking about it. They're engaging with it. So for me as a columnist, I'm writing about it yeah. every which way I could write about it, and I've been doing that. So I think that's a huge issue. And people, at least they're engaged again. I was happy to see that. And of course, the, the Governor Mike Pence now is the VP elect, so he is also in the news again. And whether you like Pence or don't like Pence, you're talking about him and that issue, this components, and it's all trickling back to Indiana and to this region, as we yeah. saw with the recent, recent Hammond City Court appoint, do, appointment. Do you think that that election story just kind of buried anything during the year that's like normally this would have come up to a higher level but the politics and the election just hate to use the word trumped everything right, else yeah, out right. but it kind of it had to but like I can't it. think of anything that didn't get the play it should have can you yeah, Krista? No I think that you know we both on, have on lists in front yeah, of us. Yeah on a day to day basis we were able to bring the local stuff to light and you know we have the hits on our I online to show that people were reading those What as I think well. it may have done Keith is because the Trump issue and the politics was in, in our minds forefront, is that a lot of news that usually fills up newspapers didn't make it into the newspapers because mm -hmm. this was doing it instead. Or on TV. Or on TV. Because, you know, CNN, MSNBC, yeah. Fox, all three of them were just, it was just too sexy to leave alone. Or create conversations for people. People would rather talk about the election. Yes. They than, would. I mean, well, they might say, did you see that thing in the paper about this? Well, but, but, or but let's talk about it. About, or let's fight, about, fight it. about it. You know, yeah. not to go on and on, but I know in our newsroom and among people I know, families are more divided than I've ever seen them yeah, in the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a column for Thanksgiving about that. Yes. Can we get along yes. for this one day yeah, no, or not? No. Yeah. And some, some friends I know are saying they're not going to get together with the family for right. Christmas. They didn't I've for Thanksgiving. But maybe our, some of our local stories help draw people together. Maybe that's a possibility on on the opposite side. I think how, about another, how about another story for you? Let me see, what do I have here? Well, the Star Plaza, not to steal your feature thunder, but this is newsy as well. It is. Um, you know, when the uh, whites announced they were gonna shut down Star Plaza and- That was uh, shocking. Up yeah, <laughs> and the theater, and in three months they changed their minds. And I think what saved it was that it was always profitable, the theater piece of it. They just felt like the way the wave is to have these big uh, stadium events where they make their money on the drinks and the alcohol. Well, that was never going to happen here. But Charlie Blum is such a brilliant impresario that he was able to find a market niche, and I think they're going to go forward and continue to be profitable with the Weird Al Yankoviches. Is this all part the of the price plan from right? the get-go, you think, Krista? Is this like new, new coke know. being introduced? And is this no. conspiracy theory? Not right? at all, not at all. Really I'm just thinking think maybe so. at 5%, they're thinking, you know, this, you know, if we get a big uproar, we might just keep this I thing. You don't I think really so? I really don't huh? think so. There I was that much wrong. public and I am and Serbian. I'm the queen of the conspiracy theorists. <laughs> you know, I wasn't thinking that. I no, just thought it was. But very I smart. didn't. No, I didn't see that. I just, you know, I People just love think that theater. there was such an outpouring yes. of like insane. Please keep there this was. here, and everybody and wrote, had memories. I wrote that column as soon as it happened, and I just I put out one or two little queries on social media. Have you ever been to the Star Plaza? And Didn't it explode for us too? Dozens and hundreds and hundreds too. of people who yes. have all these experiences, family experiences, yes. going back decades. People love that place. Well, I did a show on this too, and I pointed out that if people think their voice is not heard, look at that story. Yeah, they that's heard. A really good they point. heard the voice is, of the right. community, and the the voice was loud. The like, white family said serious? exactly that. You know, we rethought this, and we thought this is such an institution here it gives us an identity it's a it good does. brand and I didn't realize it is the third largest venue aside from McCormick Place in the Chicago theater right. I didn't in the know region that here. right in, save in the, the Chicago you know, area. John Kane says it saved the symphony they're in their 75th year and they mm. thought they, they might mm -hmm. go down if they can't have a beautiful yeah. venue so it's much more worth than we thought yeah yes. that is a story yes. note right there yeah it, and a story again that had some traction over time too yeah that was part and of my good news story yeah. yeah that was a good news story I had oh you did so good and bad I just well, just one of the. It was a good news, though. Yeah. Keith always asks, "What's the good news?" That's yeah. good news. Yeah. 
You want something else? Yeah. Uh, public Please. corruption indictments yeah. with uh, the sheriff, Lake County Sheriff John Buncich and Portage Mayor James Snyder and a couple other people involved in there. That was like shocking, but not shocking. Every year we get this. We got it also the tip of the ice or the tip of the um, Keith Soderquist indictments going came through. Going to prison. And going to prison. He was sentenced this year and all that and his wife, Deborah. So every time public corruption comes up, you know, I'm writing my next book is on public corruption, so it's in my head a lot. Every time it comes up, we go, oh, we're shocked. And then we go, oh, not really that shocked. And it but, happened again but, this year too. But wouldn't it, I think sometimes you're like, well, here, here they go again. But you know, Snyder. I mean, he's a Republican. He's in Porter County. I mean, well respected, you know, well very respected. popular. Yeah, and like, where did that come from? Yet, we, well, the investigation was for a long time. They've yeah, been hounding two years, him, more than two years, and hounding every piece of paper he had. Every person, even talking to his pastor, I was told by some federal wow. agents, it's crazy. They wanted to find something on this man, and I think they thought they did. Well, given the press that he's also saying how he's going to fight this, it's yes. going to be a story for 2017. Yes. It's it definitely going to go be. on for a and while. And the trial is supposed to be yes. in January, so yeah. right after this. We should find and out. I was surprised by both of them, too. It's funny because that was next on my list, so we're trading features for our yeah. news. But I agree. I was surprised by both of them. And you know what surprised me? Maybe this is showing my venal side, but, you know, Sheriff Bunsich makes six figures. And this was for $30,000 plus for his campaign and maybe pocketing some. So really, you know, if you're going to go corrupt, I would think yeah, but you'd that's do not, it for people. But that's not a so, factor so of public corruption. Make sure you write that down, Jerry. <laughs> if you're going on, corrupt. If you're going corrupt, just, go, big. Just, go big. You know, I, I think, I hope you know what I mean by that. Oh, I know exactly I, but, what you mean. But it just, it was But so most public officials who go corrupt, as you say, so to speak, or get caught with their hand in the taxpayer's cookie jar, do not think in those terms. It's more about just getting whatever. I'm not saying Bunsich or Snyder. Or it's a yeah. power thing. Right, it's not about the money. It's got to be more than the money. Yeah. That's, I guess, the point There's I was. There's a Porter County official, Dan Witten, he told me that from my book that I'm writing. He says, these officials don't take into account what they're leveraging and what they're gaining, and they're not getting much at all. So it's not about your, the money. Your lifelong reputation that, for that doesn't, that doesn't matter. inside power game. For really, it's I, yeah. always a few thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I guess it's more about arrogance and ignorance. Yeah. You know, they think they well can get put. away with it. That's my guess. I've lost track. Whose turn is it? Go ahead, Krista. <laughs> all right. What do I have here? Well, you I'll, guys are I'll, so interesting I'll give to you a twofer. Um, two deaths of, of really legends. Uh, mayor Pastrick at age 88. He had been mayor for uh, 33 years. Forever. From 72 to 04. Yeah. And Dean White, who the right. White family we're talking about. Uh, very wealthy. Forbes estimated his worth at uh, $2.5 billion. Uh, started out as a billboard business in 35. 11 years later, he took over. It became a real estate and hotel empire. And the interesting thing about Dean White is we had done a story about a year ago showing that he had given, uh, he was a powerhouse in Indiana Republican politics. And I don't think people realize this. He gave about 11% of the money that was donated to maybe the six top campaign funds came from Dean White. And um, between 2011 and 2014, he gave $4 million wow. to the one, two, or three you know, top, he was the top donor for, for the first one, two, or three uh, people he donated to. And I think his death is going to leave a vacuum there. He was also great, you know, it, it wasn't a self-aggrandizer, really gave of himself to the community. And a diplomat of the region. Yes, Did either one of yes. you ever get a chance to interview him? Because he was no, really I, I've difficult. Asked. I met him and spoke with oh. him, but it was not in a, a, a venue where I would have been allowed to do yeah. that. It was just high And nice I asked, and you. they Bye -bye. politely declined. Yeah. He was up in age and didn't want yeah. to. Be interviewed yeah. again. I was really disappointed in that. Yeah. We, we gave him a lifetime entrepreneurial award a number of years ago, and I think we were able to film him real quick. He let us do it, and it was just, it was almost shocking. I'll bet. But I, I think those are two people who are like, I don't think people expected them to die, maybe. Yeah, you know? I know. they're institutions, and they're yeah. going to remain yes. institutions. And opposite sides of the spectrum, all due respect to both parties. Yes. I mean, oh, you look yeah. at Dean White one way, you look at Robert yeah. Pastrick in another way, no yeah, doubt about it. Both that. from very humble beginnings, and yeah. both very ambitious, and both deemed, you know, Mayor Pastrick, despite his, you know, reputation and other peccadilloes, Everyone spoke highly of him and said he was a true gentleman. It wasn't an act. He was really a gracious, charming. And his fingerprints yeah. are still here. Yes. Just like Dean White's. Their yes, fingerprints yes. are still in the region. You and can see both them of them the just mm -hmm. highly regarded as charming people. Again, some good legends. Some good ammunition for future stories because there's going to be plenty there of follow-up to these. You know, the fingerprints, the the yeah. what the vacuum that's left from some yeah. of this. Yeah, they're this influential, leadership. no doubt about it. Yeah. 
How about, another, how about the Cubs winning the World Series, folks? Oh, man, I almost forgot this one, right? We, we can't forget it because it's such an important thing. We think that we're a bedroom community of Chicago. We're northwest Indiana, but it's such a big deal in this region as well as Chicago. People lived and died with every game. I interviewed several fans in this region who literally saw every game, every pitch. I mean, there was that, you know, that kind of fan. I wasn't a, You're absolutely that right. much of a fan until I jumped in at the end of the season, the playoffs, and I'm writing about it and that kind of thing, even though I go back you know, 30 years as a fan or 40 years, but it's a big deal to people. It made them, and I, I wrote in a column just kind of on purpose, why does it matter? Of these, of these millionaire baseball players, uh, they, they win some games, they get the World Series, why does it matter to us? How does it affect our lives? And one old lady got back to me and says, it makes my day happier every day. And that's what it does for you us. You know, I think part of this was how long people waited. Of course. I, I did hear a humorous story, which a guy who had season tickets for years, his daughter got married on the weekend of one of the major games, and he couldn't go to the. To oh, it, so. you gotta. So <clears throat> there's priorities. Yeah, there's, there's priorities. priorities. Yeah, right. He, he probably said, "I hope my daughter's worth it." But I didn't want that to slip <laughs> through our cracks. Well, you're right really because nice even in my neighborhood, is. for years, every time the Cubs win, W flags W's all, all over my, my yeah. little neighborhood. Yeah. So yeah. And look at the headlines in both newspapers. Yes. They're always there for right. us in front. They 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 transformed, gravitated from the sports pages up 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 to yep. the front page and became front page news almost every day. That was a good, another good news story too. Right? I guess it was. Yes. So of course, yeah, what's a good news story? What do we have? Oh, well, list? Great Lakes Transportation Company. Um, this Frank Patton, interesting man, uh, wants to create a railroad, the first one since 1911. Um, it has met with nothing but opposition. Yeah. He's an interesting character, though. He's 73. He's been working on this dream for six years. I think that he's really sincere in wanting to leave some kind of a legacy that That's the means word I was looking something. for, his legacy. Yeah. Yeah, he wants he, to build a legacy. In, yes, with, and it's, it's uh, $8 billion, 278-mile trip through three states and someone as interesting as Lee Morris former RDA director said you know let's listen to it let's let's see if we can overcome some of the opposition because this really is could it possible be something. To I don't know the opposition? Norfolk Southern all of the railroads have said no we're not interested they have another plan called create that's a federal state local agreement to do upgrades and track upgrades and mm -hmm. things but you know I I personally am charmed by the romance of it and the idea of it so mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to become a reality he's certainly trying but it seems like there's opposition for from Laporte to Illinois against this. So to, to NIMBY, not in my backyard. Right, a lot exactly. of those people are coming out like, any, like they do for the Illinois right. Expressway. Pre pretty interesting, too, to consider someone who wants to do something for a legacy versus the impact in the community. So it's like, OK, is this about ego? Is this about you know what, power? Back to, you know, why is somebody doing this? Why? Yeah. Nobody seems to really want it. Well, he told Keith it. Benman, our business editor, after he had a bout with cancer, and after that, he just had a different view about the world and how to make it better, and he wanted to be a part of that. So I think he's pretty sincere. I don't so know if it's an ego build a thing. Road. And hmm. usually when somebody's older age, maybe this is me being biased in a way, I give them more of a benefit of the doubt because me I think too. they're going out with something. This is my legacy. That was the word I, that he's probably and, thinking. And that Lee Morris, who, I mean, not to cast it, but he's older yeah, as he's well. He's an older and, guy, right. And they I want think a legacy. When you, get to old, when you get to be a little older, you, you are saddened that you see society is losing some dream, some ability to dream again. And right. I think that's true of us locally and nationally. And they want to cash in all their chips. So, so I want to ask you fake story real quick. You know, what fake Chris story got the just best one. got Well, so much I don't press. know if it's the best one, but it's one of my favorites. So uh, some Facebook friends were saying ABC News was reporting that uh, one of Obama's last acts was to sign uh, a directive that no school in the nation could ever say the Pledge of Allegiance ever again. And people were bashing him, and it turned out to, and ABC News disavowed it, but that never got to the people who to this day are still railing against this terrible socialist Muslim president who... You know, the wizard behind the curtain with fake news is usually people want to believe it, and that's what propels it. Yeah. So there are a demographic of people, Americans and region people here, that we believe it, and we want it to be true, so we forward it, we share it, we want it to be true. So it's not really So those true. people really think that's true. You're, yes. You're, they I want think, it to be true. I think they, they want do. it to they be true. To be. So do you think they believe it's true? I do oh, think yes, I, I do, do think so we believe it's true. I really do. Oh wow. yes. Because yeah. a lot of them are my readers and they <laughs> contact me all the time. Yes. Did you see a fake story that you thought was like, wow, I can't believe this got so much traction? Anything involving Hillary Clinton. That got the oh, most fake okay. news oh my gosh. On, on my social media sites. And people again want to believe it. No matter what it was, they want to believe it. So when you want to believe it, it's hard to dispel that kind of news. I can't go person to person, reader to reader, saying, did you look it up? Did you snopes this? Did you whatever? Right. People don't want to do that. They don't care. 
That's always amazing. That's when the interesting part. And they believe they where this. there's smoke, there's fire, so it has to be. Yeah. Right. Well, Well, you know there's got to be some truth to it. You know, it's like, right. exactly. exactly. That's, right. that's, right. that's right. where you come That's up. the mentality. And that's, right. the, yeah. that's the problem, I think. Yeah. That, and that's what, we're all guilty of that. And that's that. what news organizations are up against facing yes. 2017 with Trump yeah. in office, is that we're already against uh, behind the black ball kind of thing, and people are going to doubt right. everything we kind of write. You guys Even though we, re we, at least TV, records him saying it, yeah. yet somehow we're bad for making him look bad. To right. talk about it's an interesting year, scary. I mean, the press has always kind of got a hit. Yes. But man. Big hits. Yeah, yeah. Big People questioned um, respectability. And I mean, yeah, and, and, the, and the credibility rating for right. press is like way down. Again, yeah. back to people who want to believe this, you know, like a, the press is so biased. Yeah, we're so in an biased. age of rage. I personally don't understand it, but I'm trying to She's be She's got away with words, did not she? Age so do you. Rage. I liked what you said earlier about, I can't remember. But yeah, people <laughs> it was so are- so good. <laughs> people are You're so right, enraged that- th I, They I voted see, Trump into office. Well, and That's the how disrespect is growing, I mm -hmm. think, of our agencies, our bureaucracies. And I, I think that's a very bad slippery slope to go down. Civil and discourse. Maybe, yes. That's and, why this region has those roundtable You know, I like to think of myself as a patriot and that I care about these institutions and it hurts me that all of them are, I, I don't know, you know, what's in our future to become like the Mad Max society? 2017 I, will tell us a lot. Yeah. I know. It's a real piece. So we've probably got enough time for maybe two quick stories each if they get, just what, what did we miss here? Um, Pavilion still, Partners, the banquets. Uh, uh, fiasco. It's called the mistake on the lake, and bringing this development. Okay, he's got one now. Mistake on the lake. Age of rage. Well, really good. I'm just yes. saying this development on you yeah. know on national property and federal shoreline, that kind of thing. And people are. What I like about this is it, it enraged people again to do something about it to make these mm -hmm. prop these authorities, these business people, go through the proper channels or but it's not. Still moving forward. Yeah. It's still moving forward. Still moving forward. Well, because but, if the state legislature wants it, yeah, it's going to happen. happen. Yeah. So that's the bottom line. So but just to remind people, they're not going to be drinking on the beach. It's right. It's going to be in a legitimate venue, whatever. Well, that's what I you guess, believe. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fake. Sorry. Remember, we have bottles. Yes. Yeah, so so so. My right. last one is a Griffith wanting to secede from Calumet oh, of Township, course, of course. and they're going to be in court in March. Um, Calumet Township is sued. Griffith Griffith, and Griffith is going to try and get a summary judgment, which means, you know, this is not valid on its face. Throw it out of court. That's in early March. And that's over the fact that Griffith gives about $1 million a year to the Calumet poor relief. Township's not going to let and, go. Well, you know, and in fairness to Calumet Township, the, the way the state law reads, every month people can come back and ask for money, and if they qualify, Calumet Township has to give it to them. So we're talking about $2.3 million to 17,000 people, mostly Gary residents, and this is why Griffith is upset, so very, stay tuned. Very upset. Yeah, really. A lot of this uh, news is precedent. leaping over into 2017, Keith. That's yeah. that's what I'm saying more than anything else. From the <laughs> presidential election on down to local to East Chicago, to Griffith, to this yeah. uh, banquet facility, everything's seeping ongoing. over. It's ongoing. Yeah. So one quick prediction on what do you think the hot story for 2017 is going to be? If you could predict one story, you think, man. Locally, nationally. Pick anyone. I you think want. something related to uh, Governor Mike Pence, who is now the VP, will be the VP, and it's going to. He has his hands still in Indiana, and he's going to want to do things in Indiana and Northwest Indiana. It already started with the Hammond City Court appointment, so to speak, and I think his Hoosier, mm -hmm. you know, beginnings will seep into 2017 a lot more than we think. So some interesting stories coming up up there. I think so. I think economy. I think the people who uh, thought certain things were sacrosanct, Social Security, Medicare, uh -huh. other things, I think you're going to see a big, scary fight starting with some of these things. Do you think something really bizarre is going to probably happen in 2017? Quick answer. Bizarre, of course. Trump's in office. It's going to yeah. happen already. It's yeah. been happening. Yeah. Yes. Something. Yeah. Who knows what, though? But so, America voted for this. We want to see it. I think we're bored of the well, status quo. Well, let's remember that though he says it's rigged, Hillary did win that's by right. almost 3 million of the popular vote. Right? Well, we'll ask our viewers to stay tuned to hear what the stories are and keep reading the papers and yes. keep listening to please the media. Do. So thank <laughs> yes, you. Thank please you. do. Thank you both. And next thank year you, will be the sixth year, and this we'll see so what fun. we can do for a toast after that one. Where's my champagne? Yeah, oh, later. Later. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Keith. Well, that wraps up the top stories of 2016, and we are off and running into 2017. I am truly hoping that this coming year will be better and definitely less bizarre than the past 12 months. There was so much negativity, angst, and divisiveness. 
I'm going to take a risk and perhaps sound like a stereotypical candidate in a beauty contest. My wish for 2017 is for world peace. I know you're probably laughing, but maybe that's what we all should not only be hoping for, but striving to make happen. Elvis Costello wrote a song some time ago with the lyric, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? We are quick to laugh at the notion of peace in the world, but it starts with each of us, our attitude and actions. How about a little kindness, caring, and love in 2017? We saw plenty of the opposite in 2016, Here's my second and final song quote to sum it all up. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching our first show of the new year. How about this for your resolution? I promise to send Keith my thoughts and reactions to his show. Every once in a while is good. We really love hearing from you. Did you notice I used the word love? My wish is already having an effect. Our email address is listed on your screen and so is the website. Feedback to your public television station is important. It lets us know how our shows are impacting you. My second resolution suggestion is for you to watch a previous episode from the website. Yes, if you miss one of our amazing shows like the one today with Jerry and Krista, use the website. Make sure you join us next week for another lecture of Focus. Until then, I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying, make a positive difference in our world today. Programming is supported by NIPSCO. Today's young minds are constantly reimagining what our world will be like tomorrow. That's why NIPSCO is upgrading its infrastructure now, so we're ready for whatever comes next. More information at nipsco.com future.